All right, this is a really good exercise because this is really an exercise in functional analysis. So if you go on to study that, then you'll see this proof in a little more generality. Um, and it's not only true for linear transformations in um, these spaces, but it's true for linear transformations in general vector spaces. Um, and you just talk like linear operators, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's cool. So anyways, um, so let's do this. So if, so let's see here, what does problem one dash, dash, blah. 1-10 say, what does this say? Blah, 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 says um, that if, if uh, T R N to R M is linear, then there is some constant M such that for every single H in R N, the norm of th is less than or equal to m times the norm of h. And so we're going to prove that a linear transformation um, which satisfies this. Um, th this condition is also referred to just not just for linear transformations, but for operators in general. It's referred to as being bounded. And it turns out for... Um, uh, linear for um, just operations in general being con uh, be for linear oper blah for linear transformations in general vector spaces being continuous and being bounded are the same thing so not only does linear imply continuous which is what we're proving here but being continuous implies linear and of course that's something that gets um, proven and, and, and furthermore, being continuous is equivalent to being continuous at the point zero. So if you're continuous just at the origin, then you're continuous everywhere. So linear transformations in general vector spaces are really nice. Um, so yeah. Anyways, that's, that's me getting ahead of myself. So if this is linear... Yeah, look at Fallen Chapter 5 if you want to learn more about that. Um, linear, then there exists an M for all H, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what do we want to prove? We want to prove that T is continuous, i.e. for every single A in Rn, the limit as X approaches A of T of X should be T of A. That's what it means to be continuous at a point. But how can we rephrase this? We, if we want to rephrase this using limits, we have for every single epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that T of X minus T of A in norm is going to be less than epsilon for every single X in a ball of radius delta around the point A. Um, okay, so let M be as in problem 1-10. So let M be some, no, some bound for this uh, linear transformation. Um, some value which satisfies this inequality here. Okay, so given such an M, so suppose we're given an epsilon greater than zero um, because we want to prove that for all epsilon there exists a delta blah blah blah. So given an epsilon, how should we choose our delta? choose delta to be epsilon over capital M. Then for every single x in this ball of radius delta around A, what happens when we take T of x minus T of A? Well, since T is a linear transformation, we can write this as T of x minus A. Um, but now we can go ahead and and apply the inequality that we have. So this is going to be less than or equal to m times the norm of x minus a. Um, but x, and x is in a ball of radius delta around a, which means that the distance between x and a, it must be less than delta. So this is less than m times delta. But 
delta is equal to epsilon over m. So it's m times epsilon over m, which gives us epsilon. So it is in fact the case that given any epsilon, we can choose a delta such that for every single x in a delta ball around a, you get the distance between t of x and t of a being less than or equal to epsilon. So, um, thus, well, what does this tell us? Thus, t is continuous at a, and hence, t is continuous, and we're done. That's it.